There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another book haul. You won't see this for weeks. I am so backlogged with book haul videos in the editing pipeline, but I'm filming this on maybe June 21st, something like that. So I have been buying books like a fiend to compensate for all the pandemic stress. So there's going to be a whole stream of these. I probably won't get it caught up until Christmas. <laughs> it's a happy problem, people. So I bought them from a variety of online sources, some politically incorrect and gradually moving into more, less politically incorrect sources for some books, but not all. And some of them I bought in bookstores. I'm not going to bore you with all that, but it's got quite an assortment here. A lot of short stories in this batch. Okay, um, I am not finding consistent pronunciation help online. Here is Forvo. Dot com. This is the Irish women's pronunciation. Eilish Nirene. And this is the Irish man's pronunciation. Eilish Nirene. I'm going to use the man's because I can't possibly get my tongue around the women's, but somebody help me out. I've checked six different sites that have audio files to listen to, and I got six different pronunciations. So. Eilish Nirene. I'm going to go with Eilish Nabeen, The Shelter of Neighbors. Eilish Nabeen. Eilish Nabeen. It's a collection of short stories. She is obviously an Irish writer. Are these translated? No. Uh, first published in 2012. I'm big into short stories recently and can't usually go too far wrong reading short stories from an Irish writer. Because it was so cheap, I got a paper copy of The Return of the Soldier by Rebecca West, despite not really caring for it when I read it as an ebook last year. I found it really kind of affected in the writing style, quite ornate and dated, but maybe I was just in a bad mood when I read it, because most other people love it. Originally published in 1918, and it is about a soldier who comes home from World War I with amnesia, if I remember it. I found it really kind of boring and not satisfying, but, you know, it's a nice cover. I should give it a try again sometime. A New Zealand writer that I've long been interested in and have never tried is Janet Frame, and this is her novel, Towards Another Summer, originally written in 1963, and I have been interested in her since I saw the movie that was based on her life. An Angel at My Table. I don't remember anything about the movie now, but I've always kind of carried a torch for Janet Frame since, and finally picked up a novel. It's about a New Zealander living in London, feeling the pull to her, uh, feeling kind of homesick. It's the novel that Janet Frame, the author, considered to be too personal to be published during her lifetime. Because it was first published in 2007, so there you go. Written in 1963, published half century later. This has got a barn burner of an opening sentence I just read for the first time two seconds ago. Listen to this. When she came to this country, her body had stopped growing. Her bones had accepted enough antipodean deposit to last until her death. Her hair that once flamed ginger in the southern sun was fading and dust-colored in the new hemisphere, and she was 30, unmarried except for a few adulterous months with an American writer, self-styled, who woke in the morning, said... I write best on an empty stomach, pulled a small piece of paper from his tweed coat hanging on the end of the double bed, and wrote one line. Oh my god, I want to keep reading! I picked up a few of these little short story booklets online. This one is probably the best known writer of the bunch, D.H. Lawrence, The Rocking Horse Winner and Other Stories. I'm sure I studied The Rocking Horse Winner as an undergrad, don't remember anything about it. D.H. Lawrence is a pretty amazing writer, and... There are three short stories in here, in addition to the title story, The Sick Collier and Smile. But these are, look at, there's my hand. These are tiny booklets. And here is a collection of Welsh short stories by Deborah K. Davis, Grace, Tamar, and Laszlo the Beautiful. 2008 collection. Opening sentence of the first story. The first story is called Stirrups. Nothing had prepared her for giving birth to Tamar, 
the forceps, the stirrups, the sound of her own heart slowing down, the doctor squatting on his stool between her spread legs, stitching, stitching, and talking to someone out of her view about the squash game he'd played the night before. Another one of those little booklets. By the way, this is the publisher is Paper and Ink. I didn't mention that last time. And this is called Tophilus or the Marriage of Jose by Gemaite, translated from the Lithuanian by Violeta Kellertis. And I've never heard of Gemaite, but he died in 1921, aged about 70. And it's the pen name of a woman. Oh, how fascinating. Who had no formal education but was widely read. Her subjects were the serfs and peasants of the lowlands. Oh, this sounds incredible. I want to get to this one really soon. I can do this one for Women in Translation Month. So this was published at the end of the 19th century. And it's a female Lithuanian short story writer in English translation. How fabulous. Jemaite. Has anybody heard of her? Jemaite. I'm really excited about this one. And here's a chunkster of a collection of short stories. The collected stories of Elizabeth Bowen in this gorgeous Every Man's Library hardcover edition. I read her the last September, just a few months ago, and fell in love with Elizabeth Bowen's prose. And I think I've listened to one of her short stories on audio, so I sprang for the whole, a whole big batch of them. Opening sentence of the first story. The first story is entitled Breakfast. Behold, I die daily, thought Mr. Rossiter, entering the breakfast room. <laughs> All right. The Offing, the latest by Benjamin Myers. Benjamin Myers won a historical fiction prize, was it last year or two years ago, for the Gallows Pole. That one didn't sound as interesting to me as this one. And this is his newest one. And it is set in the summer after the Second World War. About a 16-year-old boy who walks across the northern countryside of the UK. That's all I need to know. That's a gorgeous cover. Recently I've been doing a lot of buddy reading of short stories with various booktubers or other bookish folk, including Joe Smith, who's the commenter extraordinaire of booktube. And she and I were both underwhelmed by a recent small collection of short stories by the Japanese writer Tsushima Yuko, but I loved her novels, her novellas, so we decided to give her father, Osamu Desai, a try, and this is his maybe most famous novel, The Setting Sun. We will probably, that buddy read will probably start before you see this video. Originally published in 1956, he committed suicide in 1948. This novel is set in the early post-war years of Japan. Oh, goodness. Translated by Donald Keane. This one is a Blame It on Kim of Kay Becker's Books acquisition. She talked about this on her channel, a novel by Josephine Rowe called A Loving Faithful Animal. From Australia, I'd kind of forgotten. Whatever she said about it hooked me, and I, it was a while ago. I ordered it immediately, and let's see what it's all about. A 2016 novel out of Australia, and I don't like to note too much about the novel going in, but I see that it's set New Year's Eve 1990 in Southeast Australia. That's, why would you want to know more than that, hey? Uh, she was born in 1984, and she looks like somebody you wouldn't want to cross. That's a fabulous photo. <laughs> she lives in Tasmania. No jokes about being a Tasmanian devil. You won't hear those here. I love the opening sentence. That was the summer a sperm whale drifted sick into the bay, washed up dead at Mount Martha, and there were many terrible jokes about fertility. Next is another short story collection by a writer I have never heard of, with a really enigmatic title, Tending the Remnant Damage, stories by Sheila Peters. Look at that cover illustration. Wow. I have to say that the phrase and the cover illustration take me right back into the dark heart of the novel Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. Wow. Oh, she's Canadian. It's like I'm discovering these books for the first time because I've had so many books come into the house and I've just put them on my book haul stack. I looked at them and played with them briefly when they came in, but it feels I feel like it's Christmas Day all over again here. So she is Canadian. 
and this is her debut collection. Some of the stories are set on Queen Charlotte Island, which is now renamed the Haida Gwaii, which is one of the most fascinating places in Canada, and I have never been there. You can Google it. From 2001, so I wonder what she's done since. The opening story is called The Bel Air Beach Bar Roundup. It has a fabulous opening line. Chloe inhales the salt-washed Queen Charlotte Island's air and pretends it's cigarette smoke flowing into her lungs, sending treacherous fingers out into the bronchial trees, slipping into all the tiny plural sacks to sow seeds for the flowering of tumors. Next is yet another addition to my TBR for the 2020 Read More German Books Challenge, co-sponsored by Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures and Britta Bowler. Crystal Wolf's memoir, Eulogy for the Living, translated from the German by Katie Derbyshire. Crystal Wolf had a story in that anthology of German women writers short fiction that I loved and reviewed. I'll put a link to that review, even though I don't think I especially talked about her story. But this is her memoir, written near the end of her life, about her childhood in Nazi Germany. And this is part of the German list, which is a special line of books from Seagull Press, a publisher from India that is putting out amazing number of translations from all over the world. I have several of their German list titles, but they are a publisher I want to know a lot more about because they're doing some amazing work. This is a 2018 book originally published in German in 2014. The opening paragraph of this memoir is so enigmatic I'm going to read it in full. No, that's not how it was. If you must know, the only really tiresome thing was the bickering which didn't stop even at that point. Everyone still saw me as a child, and I had stopped giving explanations. But one day I would tell them, affectionately, of course, because I was very fond of them. That was the thing. One day I'd tell them, I thought back then, though I never did. You have to make sure you behave appropriately. Really, that was important to me, though I don't know where I got it from. Certainly not from this family, or was it? From my mother, perhaps, whose outbursts harbored a desperate plea for dignity? Or from my father, who would deliberately ignore such an appeal because he wasn't up to it? And here is another collection of short stories from Australia. The author is Elizabeth Harrower, and the title is A Few Days in the Country and Other Stories. I had never heard of Elizabeth Harrower. This is from 2015, and she's had quite a few books published. She was born in 1928. Yes, she, in fact, I'm happy to report she's still alive at the age of 92, and this was published three years ago. Really, she was 89, and she published a new collection. Oh, sorry, no, this was published in 2015, five years ago. She was in her late 80s when this was published. That's amazing. Can anyone out there in Australian bookish booktube Tell me anything about Elizabeth Harrower. I see on the back flap that she wrote a book in 1970, not her first novel, but she finished writing a novel in 1970 called In Certain Circles, but at the very last moment she withdrew it from publication and it was not published until 2014. I want to know more about that, but this is a collection of her short stories. There's the end papers. And that is enough. Stay tuned for more. I have plenty more where this came from. Thanks for watching.